In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate diluted earnings per share by using the treasury stock method. So when investors hold stock warrants or, or stock options in our firm, they can potentially convert those options or warrants into stock, into common shares of our firm. And that can in turn dilute or reduce our earnings per share. So a way to think about it is to go back to our basic earnings per share calculation. And so we remember that we have net income and then we subtract out preferred dividends because we want to know the amount of net income available to common shareholders. And then in the denominator, we have the weighted average and the number of common shares outstanding during the period. And this number is going to change. The denominator is going to change if there's a conversion. If the people who have options decide to convert those options, decide to exercise those options and actually purchase our stock, that's going to change the number of shares we have outstanding. And so let's walk through an example. It'll make it a little easier to understand. So let's say that you have a, a taxi service. Uh, you get a hold of a Ferrari and you say, hey, I've got some nice wheels here. I'm going to do a taxi service. And so your net income for the period is $120,000. And you have zero preferred dividends. And your shares outstanding, let's say that is $30,000. And let's just, to make this easy, let's assume there are no changes during the year. Just there are 30,000 shares outstanding during the year. Now, you have 5,000 options out there. So investors out there, they hold 5,000 options to purchase your stock. So theoretically, they could purchase 5,000 additional shares of your stock, right? So they have this exercise price and if you, of $12 a share. And briefly, if you don't know what that means, that means that if they have an option, if they have one option, that means they can buy one share of your common stock or your firm for $12, regardless of what the price is. And so let's say that the market price happens to be $15 a share, okay? So now we want to go and say, how would we go about calculating uh, basically the, the, by using this treasury stock method? And so what we're going to do is we're going to assume that as of the beginning of the year, let's say that that was January 1st. As of January 1st, everybody who held these options decided to convert them right so we we're gonna have to give them 5,000 shares of our firm but we're also gonna get some money right we're, we're also gonna get a little bit of money here we've got 5,000 share or excuse me 5,000 options times $12 a share so we're actually gonna get $60,000 so we're gonna get $60,000 okay now we have to go and say, all right, according to the treasury stock method, what we're going to do is we're going to repurchase shares. We're going to use these proceeds, that $60,000, to repurchase shares on the open market. And so what we're going to do is take that 60000 60, and divide it by the market price. And the market price is $15 a share. So we're going to divide that by $15. $15 and that's going to give us 4000 and so what does that mean? That means that we basically took all the money that we received uh, as proceeds for the exercise of the options, and then we went and we repurchased 4,000 shares out on the, old, uh, on the open market. And if you're wondering where the treasury stock method gets its name, it's because we're purchasing these shares and then saying we're putting them in our treasury, so to speak, right? So these are becoming treasury shares, but then we're gonna give them right back, of course, uh, to the people who exercise the options. So, but we've got, we've got a problem here. Right? We've got a problem because we only have enough money to repurchase 4,000 shares and there are 5,000 options that we're assume that have been exercised. So we're 1,000 shares short. Right? If we think about our shortfall, we need 5,000 shares. And with the money we got, we we're only able to purchase 4,000 shares. So we still have 1,000 shares that we're short. And so that is going to affect, if we go back to our denominator here and our basic earnings per share, that is going to affect this. This is, we're gonna add $1,000 uh, to the denominator. So let's just go, I'll just quickly run through what our diluted earnings per share will be, and then I'll show you an even faster way to do this. So let, we'll have $120,000 in the numerator. And of course we subtract out zero because there are no preferred dividends, so we don't have to worry about that. And we have the 30,000 shares outstanding. I just got that from here. And then we're going to add 1,000. And then 1,000 is just that shortfall right here. Okay, So that shortfall is added to the denominator. And then when we compute this out, it's going to give us $3.87 a share would be our diluted, our diluted earnings per share. Okay, Now there's a faster way to get to this 1,000. 
right? So I, I want to show you a, a little shortcut here. So if you use this formula right here, where you take the market price, when I talk about the market price, I'm talking about that $15. And, and let me just run through it. It'll make it a little easier for you to understand. So that $15 market price, if you just take that and then subtract out the option price, the exercise price of $12, and then divide that by 15 and multiply by the number of options, which in our case was 5,000, that will give you that 1,000.